Hi, I'm Janet Riley, and if you're anything like me, you love bacon. I mean really love bacon. But few people know how nature's candy's made, so here's a look inside the process. In short, bacon is cured pork belly. After a pig is harvested, the carcass is cut into various sections. The pork belly is removed from the carcass by the midsection from the ham and shoulder. Next, the loin is separated from other meat, followed by the ribs and finally the skin. What remains is a rectangular shaped belly that will become bacon. The belly is carefully squared or trimmed to the right size to make sure high quality and uniform bacon is created. The next part of the process is curing. Curing is a tried and true way to preserve meat products using salt, sugar, sodium erythorbate, and sodium nitrite. Curing originated long before the invention of refrigeration. It was a way to prevent spoilage. While we all have refrigerators now, we've come to appreciate the unique cured and smoky flavor that cured meats deliver. Without curing, bacon would be just, well, pork. And while we all love pork, it just doesn't sizzle like bacon. And who ever heard of a pork wrapped scallop or a PLT sandwich? Anyway, when companies cure meat, they may use sodium nitrite made using scientific processes directly, or they may use an ingredient like celery powder that's naturally rich in nitrite. When celery powder is used, the product must be labeled as uncured, according to USDA. It's a bit of a technicality because the product will look and taste just like a traditionally cured product, but federal rules are rules and we must follow them. In making bacon, a curing mixture is prepared by mixing all the important ingredients, including nitrite, in water. This brine is then injected into the pork belly and the bellies are left to sit anywhere from 30 minutes to seven days to let the curing and that great bacon flavor develop. The cured bellies are then sent off to the smoker where they will be smoked for a specific amount of time set by the company. This smoking process not only continues the bacon flavor development on the inside, but also adds smoky flavors on the outside. After smoking comes cooling. Once the product is cooled, it's considered smoked and cured bacon. The entire bacon slab is then pressed into an even, rectangular, sliceable shape and sent off to the slicer. The slicer is set to slice the bacon slab into specific thicknesses of slices, which are then neatly stacked and packaged to be sent to grocery stores, restaurants, or just about any place that serves food. So that's how bacon's made. The next time you're frying up a slice or wrapping a steak in it, you can tell your friends you've seen the process.